What's up guys, Axis here, bringing you the 5th episode of my tips and tricks series and um, today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on the modelling I did in this uh, intro for um, Away. Um, I'm just going to be showing you the glow materials and stuff I used and basically how I did like this model here. It's not really a model, it's just kind of um, some shapes I've put in a cloner and then I've just used transform options but I'll be showing you how to use cloner and how I basically did those effects there so up in uh, Cinema 4D I just, I've just created a simple Lightroom this might be a bit laggy because I'm rendering um, but basically it's just some lights in a cloner um, so first off to create the um, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna create these first because these were probably the hardest to create, or they took the longest at least. So first, what I did was I went into my shapes and grabbed a hmm, capsule, and I just increased. Uh, well, I could just use a skill tool. Just scale this up like that. Um, I probably had the height a bit, maybe, yeah, height a bit higher. And then, yeah, that looks about right. And then what you can do here is you can either use, you can either put this into a, a editable object and then select parts and push it in. But what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to get it into a bool. So cr select your bool, put your capsule in the bool, and then grab a cube. And then just make sure that's in the middle. And then I'm just going to drag this. Um, in fact, I'm going to increase the X so it's like this. It's coming through both sides equally because it's centered. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and put this inside the bool. And as you can see, it's going to create a hole right through the bool. And um, to create another object inside the bool, I was trying to um, just copy and paste it with Control C, Control V, and then putting it like underneath it, which doesn't work. It just kind of cancels out the bool altogether. So what you have to do is grab your second bool and sh put it inside the um, as a child of the first cube, and that should work now. If I uh, just go and rotate this cube here. So if I go into coordinates uh, and then change the X to 90, as you can see, there's equal um, rectangular holes on each side. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste the cube inside here. And that will go outside the bool. We don't need the bool anymore, so I'm just going to leave that. And then what you can do is turn down the X to um, just so it's a equal rectangle again. So I'll just go 200. Um, in fact, you're going to have to bump this up so it actually goes through it. So you can actually see the materials and everything. So make sure that your it's the cube's not inside here. You need to make sure it's on the outside. So we're just going to do the X position now. So we'll just leave a little space there. And then we're going to create a quick material here. Um, it's going to be a glow material. Obviously you can use any glow material you want in any pack you have. I'm just going to create a quick one. Go into color. Set this to blue. And then change. Right click on that. Uh, preview there. And do uh, object soft shadow. There. And then go into luminance, which will create white, and we're gonna we want that, so we'll just move that down to 25. Well, whatever you really want, whatever looks good to you, for your eyes, I guess. And then click on glow. I'm gonna change these both to 50 outer and inner strength, and then I'll probably mess about with the specular. I'm gonna leave it on the uh, plastic mode. Um. Basically, I just mess around with these until I get a material that I like. That's really the best way to do things in Cinema 4D and to learn. 
um, I find that just messing about you can really create um, something like um, my best work is done by just messing about in Cinema 4D. So yeah, basically just grab that and then put it onto the cube. And as you can see, we've got one side of it. I don't actually know how to render this look on this. Yeah. Um, just increase the X a bit more. Might mess about with this material. Um, until you get something that you like. Probably to turn down the luminance a bit to make it a bit more blue. Uh, get the cloner. It's not really covering enough of the area. So I'm going to increase the radius so you can see more. So as you can see, on one side and the other side, it's lighting up. But what you need to do is copy and paste this, and then we're going to rotate this on the x-axis. we just put that back to zero. And then we'll have it on all sides, like that. We're not done yet. What you want to do now is grab your bool, bu uh, <laughs> bool, and then go into your plugins, and then go into Greebler. Greebler is a free plugin. I'm going to leave a link for that in the description, so you don't have to worry about um, getting finding another version of it. So once you've got that, put it inside um, the Greebler. Get the bool, put it as a child of the Greebler, like that, and just go into base. And I'm going to increase. And just mess about with some of the effects here and some of the parameters. It might be a bit too much, but as you can see, it looks really nice. And with shadows on your lights, and uh, I also do ambient occlusion, uh, ambient occlusion, uh, occlusion. It creates some really nice um, shadows, and they have a lot of depth to them. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to group all of these objects into one. And then I'm going to hold Alt, go into MoGraph and Cloner. And then I'm just going to set this, the Cloner, to Radial, like so. And it's you basically done for this. Now you just have to um, mess about with the radius, get something you like, like that. And what I did is I just animated the radius from around like here that the logo come in and then I just drag this down when the logo had passed and then also in the transform options I, um, it's kinda hard to see right now because um, cloners actually seem to use a lot of my CPU but you can do stuff like that, it looks really nice, kinda like a star weird star but you know <laughs> um, also I put up the count to like six or nine, I can't remember in the original. I just had that, and now I'm gonna uh, just do a quick render preview. This wouldn't have been the original lighting, but still, the lighting looks really nice on this. Just gonna take a bit to render it, all the shadows. It's actually quite a quick render. So there we go, that's the first step, well that's the first object that I'm going to be showing you, so I'm just going to switch this off, and then I'm going to start on the second, well the, it was the first that I used, it's these ones with the um, kind of small cylinders. So what you're going to want to do is go into your shapes, I'm going to use a tube, and I'm just going to change the inner radius to zero like so I might actually just delete this cloner because it's slowing down my PC uh, and then I'm going to raise up the outer radius and then what I did here was I just I just put the glow object on this I might actually turn up the glow a bit outer. 200. There we go. And then I'm going to copy and paste that and I'm going to delete this material. And then I'm going to put 
I'm going to grab the Greebler again and then put the second or copied um, uh, tube inside here. And then what I can do is I'm just going to mess about with the Greebler again until you can kind of see both the um, tubes. So yeah, just scale up the first tube. Uh, you could even add Greebler to this one. Might make it look even crazier. If that's what you're going for here. So I'll probably just turn down the max. In fact, um, there. That looks pretty good. And I'll just adjust this one to accommodate it. And this could be like kind of like a launch pad or something, I don't even know. But you can create some really cool stuff with Greebler. Um, as you can see, it doesn't look amazing because I haven't textured it all. I haven't textured the glow or anything. Once you do that, it looks really nice. And then obviously just add this. Just put this in a null by doing Alt-G. And then click, select that, go and press Alt, MoGraph and Cloner. And that will put that as a child of the cl uh, cloner. And once again, set the mode to radial. And then, basically how I did the ball effect, was I just left it like that. And I made it kind of go uh, on evolutions on the uh, Z rotation here, as you can see. And I just animated that over a certain amount of time. And then, once it was all done, I opened the... Uh, well, I changed the um, radius, keyframed that out when the object, well, the logo was going through it. And I also made these flat, well, so they kind of overlapped a bit. And then also I'd turn up the count a bit more. So that was basically how I did my models for my away intro. Um, so I hope this was really helpful because a couple of people have been requesting it on Skype and stuff. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. I've got a motion pack um, out now. I'm putting it down um, by half price this week. So if you want to go and pick that up, it's only £2.50, which is um, quite cheap actually compared to some motion packs out there. Um, and I'm going to be updating it over time obviously with them. Um, like light rooms and materials which I haven't added yet but I'll just email that to whatever email you're using as your PayPal so um, yeah thanks for watching um, remember to like uh, and comment some more suggestions for um, tutorials and I'll see you guys next time bye